In this video, I wanna show you how to install a freestanding tub and faucet. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. I must first install this freestanding faucet. And the reason why I gotta do it first is because it's gonna be behind the tub and I won't be able to get to it later. So we gotta address that first. And the reason why I went with this off-brand is because it's about a third of the price of like Delta or the big name brands. And I didn't see the sense of spending $600 for a freestanding faucet. So I went with this one. I'm not sure how good it'll hold up, but I figured it was worth the risk if it was only a third of the price. So this was just a little under $200. In order to anchor this, I gotta take it apart. So I'm gonna put the head of it down to the side for a moment. I'm now just gonna set this onto the floor where it's gonna go. And now I got to lift up this cover and I got to install this center of the room. So I'm going to take my tape measure and then just get this setting where, exactly where I want it. Now that I got setting where I want it to go, they sent these bolts in order to bolt it to the floor. But since I have subfloor here, I'm actually just going to use deck screws and secure it in a place using these. So I'm just going to drive them right into the subfloor. And as you can see, that gives it a nice finished look on the floor. I'm now just gonna put my level on it and it looks like I do gotta shim up the one side just a little bit. As you can see, I did place a shim under here and readjust this accordingly. Now I'm just gonna re-tighten up those screws. Now I'm gonna recheck with my level and see what we're looking like now. And that looks perfect that way. And that looks perfect that way, awesome. As far as the water lines go, it came with the main supply lines. These are gonna fish up into the head of this faucet, but I need to extend the bottoms. So they came with these extensions because this is just long enough to go through the floor. So with these extensions on, it'll make it through. And then on top of the extensions, it came with these pieces that will actually go into the end of the faucet and it'll make it a 3 8 adapter in order to hook into my shark bite fitting like so. So you'll understand all this after it's together. So I'm just gonna hook these extensions onto the supply lines. I'm now gonna take a crescent wrench and another wrench here and tighten these down even more to make sure we got a good seal. I noticed these will not fish down through the floor because these ends are too bulky. So I'm gonna have my helper fish these up through the floor. All right, got them. Now I gotta secure this to the faucet head. I'm now gonna use this Allen wrench I came with and back out the Allen set screws in the back. And now I'm just going to attach the hoses into these little spots in the back. Now the trick here is these are gonna to have to thread into here. So we're gonna to have to twist these. So my helper is still below holding these up. So we got the hot that's gonna go here, then the cold's gonna go there. Now I'm just gonna tighten this up with the crescent wrench. And now I'm gonna do the cold. seem to be on there very tight. Now we're gonna set this down into place and make sure our set screws aren't in the way here. And now that we're setting into place, I'm just going to take that Allen wrench and tighten up the set screws in the back. I'm gonna install the wand. So in order to do that, we must install the tapered side onto the wand like so. And then you're gonna to wanna to hand tighten it on really tight. And then after you install it onto the wand, we're just going to place it onto the freestanding faucet like so. And again, you just hand tighten it really well. And that's really all there is to installing this part. And then after you got it tight, you're gonna set it right into the stand. Before I go down the crawl space and make the connections to the faucet, I'm first gonna address the tub from up above. So in order to do so, we're gonna tip this over onto its side. And underneath here, we're going to have to hook up this tailpipe in order to give it a place to drain through the floor. I'm now going to install this tailpipe to the drain. And if you need to pick this up, you can purchase it from the links in the description below. But what I'm going to do is place this rubber seal on top of this tailpipe. And then this is just going to thread onto the drain. 
you want to make sure you hand tighten that pretty snug and that is about all there is to it you don't want to over tighten it and strip anything so that's pretty good there now that's going to go right through the floor we're now going to take the tub pick it up and set it into the hole that i have in the floor that i cut out while i was installing the tile so we're going to, have to lift it up and right into the hole now that we got roughly setting where it's going to go i'm going to take a level and lay it right in the center here and if i take a look it looks like the front end needs shimmed up just a little bit. So that's what it shows that way. Now I'm gonna put a two foot level into the tub. I'm gonna to set this two foot level right in the center. And according to this, it actually looks pretty good. It looks like this right side needs shimmed up just a little bit. So now that we know this side needs to come up and then this front end. I now got the tub setting level where I want it. And I wanted to show you something really important about putting these shims under here. Whenever you slide these under here, make sure you're sliding them underneath of a leg and not under the side of the tub. So in order to do that, I slide it, then I shift around until I feel the leg. Then once I do, I make sure I slide it under the leg like so. So be sure not to shim right up against the tub. In order to cut these shims, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark it right here where it meets the tub. And then I'm just going to pull it out and I'm going to cut it back about an inch and then slide it back underneath that leg. And I might have to use another shim to slide it in tight. And all this is just to hold it enough until we get a nice bead of silicone under it. Now that I got this cut off, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to have to find our leg and push this in nice and tight. And then I'm going to take this other shim just to get it out of sight. And now you can see after we silicone this, it's going to be shimmed and the silicone is going to help support it as well. I'm now directly below the bathroom. I first had to install the rubber washers that came with the faucet into the ends of the pieces that were sent to go in the water lines. And then I just hand tightened the push to connect fitting, which is the shark bite. And this is three eighths going to a half inch water pipe is what these shutoff valves are for. And these are just simple quarter turn shutoff valves and you can see them and there is a link in the description below. Then I'm simply just going to repeat that process on the hot side. Because I installed them just hand tight, I'm now going to go back and use a crescent wrench to tighten them down even more. You definitely need to make sure these are very snug. If not, you'll have to come back and tighten them up later if they're leaking. I'm now going to use my ratchet pipe cutter and cut the PEX pipe to length in order to meet the quarter turn shutoff valve. And if you want to see that video in the top right hand corner of the screen, that's me roughing in this whole house with PEX. And now I'm just going to push the shark bite fittings onto the water line. And this is just push to fit just like any other shark bite. Very easy to do. I'm now going to take an inch and a half trap hooked to an inch and a half pipe that's going to go over to a two inch pipe right here and elbow down to it. So I did have to get a reducer to do this. I'm just measuring to exactly where I need to cut the pipe. And then after I got it marked, I'm just going to take my Sawzall and cut it right off. And after you cut it off, you need to deburr the pipe. And I'm just going to use the utility knife to do such a thing. And then after it's deburred, I'm just going to set everything right back up there and make sure it all looks good and where it should be. And then after I dry fit it where it should be, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to reach over to the two inch pipe, as you can see me getting ready to do. And I'm going to mark it on the pipe and actually on the fitting. And that's going to give me two marks to where I got to line up that elbow when I go to reinstall it. Very important to do this step. Now, plumbing into your plumbing at your house might be totally different than this, but I just want to give you an example of what you may or may not have to do. Now I'm going to take apart everything that I had pre-made and use primer to prime all the joints. And then after it's primed really well, I'm just going to use PVC cement and the PVC cement goes around the joint as well. And I also put it in the fitting and I put it on the pipe whenever I go to install PVC. After you glue it, you want to hold it together for about 20 seconds. I'm now going to apply glue and primer onto the two inch pipe to where the elbow is going to go into. And now that everything's primed and glued right here at this elbow, I'm just going to go ahead and install it. And just like the marks I made earlier, they need to line up. So if you can see here, it's lining up perfectly. A little word of advice when you're using primer and glue is be sure to 
be in a well ventilated area if possible and if you're not be sure to open up any kind of vents that's in the crawl space or even wear a gas mask i actually usually do that but i actually forgot mine upstairs but what i'm doing here is just using teflon tape to put on the union because this trap is removable later just in case you drop something that's valuable down the drain such as a ring you can just simply undo the union and pull down the trap and retrieve whatever you lost so a very nice feature to have i do install the ones that glue together sometimes but these are definitely superior to those i'm now just going to prime and glue everything together that's left and i'm just going to put the trap to the inch and a half pipe and then after I hook that together, I'm going to take the adapter that where the tailpipe that's coming out of that tub is going to adapt to. It's just a simple inch and a half adapter that's going to create a slip joint between the tub's tailpipe and the plumbing underneath the house. So it's very nice and that's what gives that trap the ability to be pulled off. I'm simply going to put glue on that elbow and place the adapter over the tailpipe and push it all together at once and then after it's all together I'm going to use strapping to support that trap even though it's not much weight it's still important to support your plumbing. And to support the PEX pipe I'm just going to use the half clamp to support it to the joist. Now that the tub's setting into place, I'm going to take a clean rag and 100% silicone and secure this down to the floor. So the first thing I need to do is go around the edge and clean it really well with the rag. In order to do so, we're just going to wipe really well right around this edge. Now that we're really clean, I'm going to take the 100% silicone and cut the end just about a 45 degree angle and I don't want to cut it off too far back here because I want to be able to fit it under the tub as I go because I want to use this to help secure it to the floor as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and just start filling in this gap between the tile and the tub. And I warned you ahead of time, it's going to take several passes because it's a good bit of caulking that's going to take to fill in that crack. So don't be surprised if you go through several tubes of caulk in this process. Now that we got it filled up decently with caulk, I'm just going to wipe my finger clean with a damp rag and just smooth this out. And now do this around the whole tub. I have my tub installed along with the faucet and it turned out really nice. If you would like to know how I installed this double vanity, check out this video. It'll help you out.